let me know if you need anything. It's a simple enough phrase. We say it pretty often. We say it at funerals to the grieving family. We say it to a new mom who's exhausted after nights of not sleeping with a colicky baby. We may say it to our neighbor after they've had major surgery. Let me know if you need anything. We say it because it's the polite thing to say. We say it without really expecting anyone's going to come and ask for more. We say it the same way we say, hi, how are you? And expect to hear, fine, thank you, and not terrible, just leave me alone. Let me know if you need anything. We say it without expecting someone's going to ask us to actually follow through or do something for them. How many of you remember hearing about the days when uh, there were barn raisings and all of the pioneers would load into their wagons and travel for miles and miles and miles to a new neighbor's house to help them raise their barn? They did that because one day people had done that for them and another day they would all go to another new neighbor's house and help them raise their barn too. I love Little House on the Prairie. As a kid, it was one of my favorite shows, and I love watching it with my daughter, who's here today. And what I really have learned in watching it again as an adult is that no one in Little House on the Prairie ever actually asks for help, and yet they're constantly being helped and being served. What you don't notice is people asking. So you see Pa, who is very proud, and he often lets his pride get in the way, like most of us do, of asking for help when we need it. Likewise, you don't see Ma or Laura or Mr. Edwards say, let me know if you need anything. What you see suddenly is things happening because they've noticed someone's in need, and they've decided to find a way to help that person or that family. So they come together and they do something. And a little while later you see them and they're watching how happy they've made the person that they've helped. And they're happy because they've made someone so happy. Because research has shown that in giving to others, the givers get as much out of that as the recipient does. So giving is a wonderful thing. But history tells us the fabric of society was very different back then. People actually helped one another because they had to. They couldn't survive on their own. So it wasn't a matter of, of need. It was just an expectation. When something had to be done, the people came together and they did it and they worked together to do that. It's not like that today. Today, self-reliance is a badge of honor. We pride ourselves on telling everyone how much we do and how often we do things and where we go and all of the things that we're constantly juggling. And we don't give a lot of thought to what that does to us. And what we never want to do is ask for help because it's a sign of weakness. So when we find ourselves in a time of need, we don't know how to ask. We're afraid to ask. We don't know who to ask. We don't know what to ask for in our most vulnerable moments when we truly need help. Let me ask for help, or let me ask, let me know if you need anything. We say it and we just don't expect anyone to come back to us ask, ex expecting us to help them. So imagine if we changed how we think about things. There's an author, a blogger, and hands-free mama, some of you moms might follow her on Facebook or follow her blog, Rachel Macy Stafford. And I want to read something she says because she talks about her daughter and she calls her daughter a noticer. And she says, we are all just waiting for someone to notice. Notice our pain, notice our scars, notice our fear, notice our joy, notice our triumphs, notice our courage. And the one who notices is a rare and beautiful gift. I love this and I think it's so inspirational, but I wanna ask you to take that a little bit further. It is truly a blessing to be a noticer, but I wanna ask you to be doers and to be helpers and to be servants, because in that you're going to find a tremendous amount of joy. There are so many times that we can make a difference by stepping up and being 
the noticer, the helper, the doer, the servant. Imagine you're the family of a chronically ill child. And someone comes to you and says, listen, I know things are crazy right now, so we've set up a meal service for you, and they're going to be bringing lunch or dinner uh, every night at 5 o'clock to the hospital, so you don't have to worry about it now. My friend, whose son survived childhood cancer, says when they were in those days at Children's Hospital, they were literally coping minute by minute and living day by day. She said she had no idea when people said, let me know if you need anything, what to ask for, because she didn't know what was coming in the next minute of that day. But that if somebody had just noticed that she needed something, if somebody had made a specific offer of help, we'll bring you meals, we'll sit at the hospital with a baby for an hour so you can go home and take a shower. She says it would have made all the difference in her life at that point in time. What about a new mom? Those of us who are moms have heard the expressions, you know, we're tired and we're exhausted, and people say, oh, it's okay, it'll pass, don't worry, it'll go away. Or sleep when he sleeps. Or let me know if there's anything you need. Imagine how you could change that mom's day or week, even that baby's day or week, because we know that babies feed on the mom's stress. If you said, listen, I cleared my schedule for the afternoon. I'm going to come over from 1 to 3. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm going to watch the baby. You go take a shower, take a walk, read a book, whatever you need to do. I, I got this covered. Most moms that I know would jump for joy, not just because you noticed and made the offer to help, but because you didn't make them ask. Because moms think we can do it all, and we want to do it all, and to ask for help is a sign of weakness. So to be that person that notices someone needs help and step up and help them in that time without them having to ask could mean the entire world to them and change their day. Now think about your neighbor. He used to be the guy that went around and did everything. He was the one you could count on anytime you needed help. He could come over and fix anything, repair everything. He was always out there. He played with all the kids in the neighborhood. But he's getting older and he's not as stable on his feet as he used to be. And there's six inches of snow out there. And his daughter told him she was going to send some pictures of the grandkids, so he's excited to get the mail. But he knows if he tries to go outside, he might slip and fall and nobody might notice. Or he'd be hurt so badly he might have to leave the home that he spent his whole life in. Imagine how you could change his day if you took the time to walk over in an extra 10 minutes and shovel his sidewalk and shovel his driveway and maybe even bring in his mail. You could actually change his life, his outlook, his loneliness. You could fill a void in that person's gap. It might only be for 10 minutes, but that day you would have made a difference in someone's life. So why does it matter what we say? You probably think it doesn't. Let me know if there's anything you need. Sounds great. It sounds polite. But when someone's at their weakest point, when someone's at their most vulnerable time, no matter what the circumstance, whether it's their family or a friend or a loved one, if you can be the helper, the doer, the servant, if you can notice that need in them and fill it, you can make a tremendous difference. So let me know if there's anything you need. Maybe the polite thing to say, but that doesn't make it the right thing to say. The noticers, the thinkers, the helpers, the, the doers, they're the ones that can change the world because they see the need, they make the time, and they change a life. Thank you.